To begin chapter two, I want to take a moment and talk about what is design intent. The basic meaning of design intent is that it is a method of design in SOLIDWORKS to create relationships between objects. And due to these relationships, if a change is made to one area, it automatically propagates to another. But design intent goes further than just the basics. Design intent is a way of thinking when you model a part. You think about how a part is best created. You think about where the origin point should be used and then your part created around the origin point. You think about what feature tools should be used and in which order. You preempt what design changes could be made in the future and how that may affect your model and what the most efficient way you could incorporate that into your design. Can you use global variations and equations in the design process so that changes can be easily made, possibly even creating variations of the part on the fly. And after all this, you need to think about what is the most efficient and effective way of modeling this particular part in SOLIDWORKS. That is what design intent is in SOLIDWORKS. And it is something that comes over time through experience. You'll begin to understand all these little things without even really thinking about it. And it will become an automatic process whenever you begin a new part in SOLIDWORKS. To give an example of some really basic design intent, we're going to use this image on the screen. Let's imagine that a designer has given us a sketch of this part and he says, I want you to recreate this in SOLIDWORKS, but there is one main condition you need to consider. And so the designer says that this cutout through the center here, it's always going to be based around the center of this part. So he says, keep that in mind, draw it as as it is now, as I've given it to you, but just keep in mind that there may be some changes in the future of that cutout in the middle. And it's either going to be, maybe it's going to be in the center or the other side of the part, but just do the model as quick as you can so that we can make those changes in the future. And so you go back to your desk and you begin modeling this part. So here I have the basic extruded rectangle already created, and we need to create this cutout on the side here. And this is where some design intent starts to come into play. So we need to think about this cut shape through the middle. And we know from the designer, he said specifically that it's always going to be in the midpoint of this part. And that design changes may happen and it's going to be somehow related to that center mid plane of the part. So we know that there's no point doing a sketch on this side of the face and then cutting it to the center because if that change was to then be put to the other side, we would have to delete that feature and then do the whole process over again on the other side. Same goes if the designer was to say, okay, we need that cutout to be in the middle now. We would have to then delete the feature we created on this side and then create a sketch in the mid plane and etc. So it's not really effective or efficient to be creating a sketch on this side. And we need to think about, okay, we know that it's always going to be in the mid plane. We know that any change is going to be related to it. So maybe we should be creating our sketch on the mid plane of the part and then controlling the cut from there. And that's what we're going to do. So we're going to create a sketch on this front plane. Like I've already created the origin point of this shape to be in the center of the part, as you can see here. The origin is the center right here, knowing that later on I'll need to create the mid plane in the middle there. So again, design intent, I don't have to actually create my own plane to try and get the center of this part. I can just simply use the front plane because I know that it's the center of the part. So moving on, we create the sketch on that part and we're just going to draw that basic shape. So we know it goes across, comes down, comes back up and then finishes there. We can exit our sketch, go back to our isometric, and we can then cut the part. So we want to flip the direction and we can probably just say up to next and then cut the part. And there you go. We have our first design created for our designer and we give that part to him. Next week he comes by and says, okay, we need that cut on the opposite side now. We don't want it this side, we want it on the right side. And because of our design intent, we know that all we need to do is edit the feature that we created originally. So we go, okay, no problem. We go to this feature, we edit feature and we just flip direction, click okay, the part's done. 
We give that to the designer. He's happy. Took us, you know, no more than 10 seconds. Otherwise, we would have had to delete the feature, create a sketch on the other side, etc. That is design intent. It's knowing, it's preempting these changes that could happen. So now the designer comes back. He says, we just need to cut through the middle now. And it's going to be 30 millimeters wide. We go, okay, no problem. So we can go to edit feature. We will change that to mid plane, change the width to 30 and we push okay. And we now have a cutout directly through the middle. Again, thanks to the design intent, it is very easy to just modify that one part. And finally, the designer says, okay, we need that cutout again in the center, but we want it to the left of the mid plane. So it just needs to be moved over. It can't be in the center. It just needs to be on the mid plane. No worries. We go back to our edit feature. We're going going to just do our regular blind, flip the direction and we keep it at 30 and there we go. So as you can see, because we thought about where those changes are going to be taking place, knowing that it's all going to be based around the mid plane, that's where we started our feature and our sketch so that we could create those changes without having to delete features and then adding new ones or anything like that. We could control it all from the one feature, make the changes super, super simple and just do it on the fly like that. So again, design intent comes with experience. It is something you just get familiar with and after a while, you don't even think about these little details. You simply know the best way of doing something, or at least the, probably the best way of doing something and just going straight into it. You don't have to think about those small minor details every time you design something. But until you get to that point, there are some great resources available to help you with your design intent in SOLIDWORKS. First, take a look at my part model challenges. This is where I find some interesting working drawings online and then try and recreate the parts in SOLIDWORKS. This gives you a step-by-step -step process to how I personally would create these parts as a SOLIDWORKS professional and gives you some really interesting information along the way. Another resource to use is to jump onto YouTube and search for the SOLIDWORKS Model Mania Challenges. This is a big series. I think there's maybe 15 or 20 videos of professional SOLIDWORKS challenges. The Model Mania is a competition that is held by SOLIDWORKS each year and they take a really complex part or what may seem simple that is quite complex once you start to think about it. And in stage one, you have to create that part as quick as you can. After part one is done, they will show you a design change that needs to be done. And you ha then have to make that change and model it as quick as you can. And so the winner is whoever can do it the fastest. These videos showcase some amazing SOLIDWORKS drafting uh, from very professional SOLIDWORKS users. So I really recommend once you become a bit more familiar with SOLIDWORKS and you get the hang of just basic modeling, definitely check out the Model Mania videos because it will give you some really good tips on how to create complex parts in SOLIDWORKS and some really good design intent information on how they do that as well.